Welcome everyone, my name is Cody Scott, and in this video, we talk about how to color grade your Canon EOS R footage the right way. And I mean, the right way. My friends, my family, and everyone else in between, welcome to a channel that teaches you how to explore, inspire, and engage as an active videographer. My name is Cody Scott, and if you're new to this channel, please feel free to consider hitting that dislike button. Gotcha. I'm not going to postpone this video any longer with a bunch of blabbing because there's a lot to cover. So let's jump into tip number one. The first step is to identify the color space you are shooting in. If you're shooting with just the camera settings and some custom picture profile, well, you're shooting in Rec. 709. If you're using the 8-bit C-Log, well, you're still in Rec. 709 color space. Now, if you're using the 10-bit C-Log setting in your camera using an external monitor like the Atomos Ninja V, which is the one I use, then you are now shooting in a BT2020 color space. And why that's important is because you're gonna have to convert all of these or color correct them differently. Step two, color correct in camera. Whether you're shooting in Rec. 709 or 10 bits BT2020 color space, it's always better to manipulate your settings to get the image you're looking for in camera. This will save you tons of time in post-production and when you bring it over to your computer to edit, it's gonna look exactly how you were looking at it on your monitor. Pretty easy, right? Makes sense. Step three. Now this is something that I don't see anybody doing on YouTube. Well, just in general. When you're editing in Final Cut Pro, there's a setting that allows you to override your color space. You go up to this tab here, click this little icon here, and change that to the color space you were using when shooting your content. Now, most of the time, I am shooting in BT2020 color space using the Atomos Ninja V, which means I have to go up here and change my color space to BT2020 so I can tell Final Cut Pro to look at my footage like that. Does that make sense? You're basically just telling Final Cut Pro to look at the footage the way that it came out of your camera. If not, then your footage is gonna look all wonky and all muddy when you shoot it and then bring it back in post-production. So please, override the color space to how it came out of your camera. Step three, color correction comes first. Hey, Beto. I'm gonna need you to not do that, Beto, because I'm, I'm, cre I'm creating a video, Beto. Can you go in here? Can you go in here and eat your one, Beto? Thanks, Beto. Whew. <laughs> Had to make a quick run, my, uh, and my dog was over there being pretty loud. I don't know if you uh, picked him up in this microphone here. Anyway. <sighs> Where was I? Right. Color correct before you start color grading. Now, color correction is the process of correcting your footage to the point where all the colors in your image are represented accurately to where the natural eye is actually seeing them. Does that make sense? Dang, I need to work out more, goodness gracious. Anyway, you're balancing your white balance, you're changing your exposure, using your waveforms and your scopes. Don't trust your eye because that thing is gonna lie to you. And make sure, and I didn't plan to say this, but make sure your monitor is calibrated. Because if it's not calibrated, then you're not gonna get the most accurate colors if you are trusting your eye. This bad boy here, I calibrate it once a week. These iMacs actually come out of the box with a blue tint to their screen. So you're seeing everything incorrectly if your eye is the only thing you're using to grade your footage. Keep that in mind. I, didn't, I wasn't planning on saying that, but you know, I think that's important, right? Anyway, color correct before you start color grading. But let's move into step four, which is color grading. Now, color grading is the process of adding a creative LUT or a lookup table to your footage. And if you don't have any creative LUTs, well then you can do it manually. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, I don't encourage you to go buy these silly LUTs that you find on YouTube, and here's why. See, a LUT is made from an individual using a certain camera in a certain environment during a certain time of the day with very specific camera settings. 
What does that mean for you? That means if you don't recreate those same circumstances, well, the let that you buy for them for like 10, 15, 20 bucks, it's not gonna look good, right? So please don't go Google searching LUTs and all these, cause you're not gonna, well, you might find like one good one, but you see where I'm going with this. And something very important to consider is to color grade based upon the emotion of your video. Take a step back, look at your video. How do you want your viewer to feel after watching this video? Do you want them to feel sad? Do you want, to feel, do you want them to feel mad, angry, happy, joyful? Um, I mean, in, insert any emotion here. Color grading should reflect the emotion of your video. And something key to consider, if you're creating commercials and you're doing commercial work, your clients need to know this. Their clients buy emotionally. You know, you go to the grocery store and say, man, I want that box of cereal because it makes me feel good. And then your brain intellectually says, well, I, I can't afford that, or I can't afford it, but you don't need it, essentially. So people buy emotionally. I got off topic, but that's a way of saying that color grading allows you to convey a certain emotion that will allow your viewers to feel a certain way after watching it, which is very important. Let's move on. My next step was never buy a let, but I kind of covered that already, so let's move on to the next one. <laughs> anyway, enough with the blabbing. Anyway, I spent enough time informing you about everything you need to know before we move into color grading. Now please don't take that lightly, and if you skip through this video, you've already missed very important information because you need to know that stuff before we start color grading and color correcting. Let's start with Rec 709. If you're just using a custom picture profile in your camera, Stop using it. Go to your custom picture profile, click on faithful, shift the sharpness all the way to zero, your contrast to minus one, your saturation to plus one, and keep your hue exactly where it's at, at zero, right in the middle. This will actually get you the most dynamic range out of your camera. And if you plan on doing color correction and grading in post-production, oh man, you're in for a treat because this looks remarkable. It gets you pretty close to log without actually having to shoot in log. Now something else to consider is your ISO and your aperture. Keep your ISO at 100 and do, if you're in a dark situation, do not bump that bad boy up to expose your image. Go buy some lights, bring them to your shoot, and add more lights to your shoot to expose your image. Now I, I know I'm gonna get a lot of punches in the face verbally with comments down below saying that's that's crazy talk, but I've been using this camera for a very long time now, and I know by changing your ISO, you're changing the way your camera represents that color when it's, well, when you're shooting. Keep your picture profile set on faithful, and if you need to expose your image more, bring in more lights to light your subject, your environment, your background, and all in between, but do not change your ISO. Forgive me for my passion, but I've seen a lot of stuff online about this camera, that is ridiculously incorrect. I've tested everything in this camera. It took me a long time to do it and I brought it into these waveforms and checked everything out, but trust me, this information is gold. Now let's move on to my favorite, BT 2020 C-Log Color Space. <sighs> that sounds heavenly when I talk about it. <laughs> the amount of flexibility that comes out of this setting, the 10-bit, that represents your color space so well. And the flexibility you get from C-Log is remarkable. You know, you can convert this and, and manipulate your image to look like a red camera, an Alexa camera, a black magic camera, or just add some contrast and some film grain and you're off to a pretty good start here. Now, Canon does provide a lot of LUTs that you can go on their website, download, import to anywhere that you need to to convert your footage if you're using a monitor. But I found all but one of those, and I think there's like a hundred of them, all but one actually work. And that one that does work, it doesn't give you the most dynamic range. However, I have found three conversion LUTs by Motion VFX that you can pull off of one of their free plugins. It's called MLUT. Go to motionvfx.com, type in MLUT, download that into Final Cut Pro, and then go to, go to the MLUT folder stored in your computer, 
and grab C log four and C log three and C log two. If you want to get more creative, grab the Black Magic V2 and the Black Magic V3. And lastly, grab the Red Film V2. And they're not gonna add all this crazy, muddy poop to your image that you would get by using any other conversion lets you find online. Trust me, I've went through it all and these things are on point. The one I use the most is the Canon V4. Anyway, if you wanna download those conversion LUTs that you can simply toss on your footage right now if you shot BT2020 and get a better image by far today, right now, you can download them in the link below. It's completely free. I don't even know how I'm gonna like, I don't know, I guess put them down there for you guys, but I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. All right, that's it. Enough with the blabbing. We're jumping over to Final Cut Pro and we're gonna color grade and color correct this footage in real time, starting with Rec. 709, then moving on to BT 2020. So I have my clips broken up here into two different segments. I have the Rec. 709 color space over here. As you can see, this is the vlog that I was actually just recording. I shot this in the Faithful profile that I was telling you guys where you adjust it to zero, minus three, plus one, zero. And here's a clip that I shot in Faithful. Uh, a little underexposed, but it's okay. We'll work with it. And then over here, we have all of my BT2020 footage. Now, as I mentioned, step one is overriding your color space. So I'm just gonna go up here into my media folders where I have everything stored very neatly. And you can highlight all of your clips. Then you go to this little eye right up here Go all the way down to where it says color space override. Click where it says off. And then you select the color space you're at. As we mentioned, we're in Rec. 709 color space. So we just convert all of our media to Rec. 709. Now this is representing our color space accurately. Same thing with this. If you don't click up here, just a quick fun fact, you can also click on your clip, click on I, color space override, Rec. 709. Now, you're gonna notice nothing changes here. With Rec. 709, Final Cut Pro actually edits in Rec. 709. That's your natural color space that you pull your projects up in, so you're not gonna see a big difference. Where you see a big difference is your BT2020 clips. So let's just pull up a clip from this film that I'm working on. Let's go to this one. Now, if I click on my media pool up here, Command A, to select everything, click on I, color space override, and then Rec 20. That's how we want to convert our footage. And you'll notice once I click it, you're going to see a difference in my media. Now it is accurately representing the colors that are coming out of my camera. And you can quickly see why this is going to save you so much time trying to get those colors bounced the right way. And I mean, that just looks beautiful right out the gate. So once you do color space override, you then move into color correcting. Let's quickly do the Rec. 709 starting with that. So I always start with exposure and it's pretty easy from here. So I pull up my color board, click on exposure. Command seven is what my uh, command keys are at. I've customized mine, but you know, I'm sure yours is the same. Um, professionals will tell you not to do this, but I do it. I take all the saturation out of my image so I can represent my colors evenly. You can see on my scopes up here how it changes just a little bit. So I will bring that all the way down. Now using the Ansel Adams system, I'm going to properly set my exposure. So I know my midtone should probably like right around here. Shadows right around here. And when I turn my saturation back on, it looks better instantly. I'll turn it off and turn it on. And you can quickly see why it looks so different, right? So now my color space is represented accurately. It's relatively color corrected. That means I'm representing all the colors that were cutting, coming out of my camera accurately. Now it looks like there's a little bit of yellow in the midtones, so I'm gonna grab my midtones and just ever so slightly bring that down. And now your image is color corrected. I'll do the same thing to my BT 2020 clips. So I'm looking at it and it's gorgeous, like right out of the gate. All these clips 
look beautiful, right? Where I save time is downloading those LUTs that I told you about that are completely free from MLUT because they are the closest thing that come to converting your footage. Now don't use the MLUT plugin because they do not allow you to change your color space and you're gonna see what I'm saying in a second. You grab your custom LUT, drag it on your footage, go over to your inspector window, drop down, and I have mine under LUTs, C-Log 4. Looks beautiful, right? And you can see right here, you need to make sure, look right here where it says Rec 2020 and Rec 709. If that does not say Rec 2020, then you're not color correcting in the right color space. Because we changed it in our inspector window up here, color space override Rec 2020, we don't have to worry about changing it here because it does it automatically. Now let me show you what I mean. If we were doing it in a Rec 709 color space, do you see why that would look bad? This is why your LUTs look bad when you buy them online and then try to apply it to your footage. It's because you are not using the override color space function in Final Cut Pro. So make sure you do that. And now you're representing everything correctly. Now I can make a few adjustments here with my color board and I wanna make sure I put the color board before my conversion up here. You would see a big difference if it wasn't the same. So color board, any correction you have always comes first up top here. So it looks like my shadows could be brought down just a tiny, tiny bit. My highlights are fine and my midtones look great. And I'm happy with that. I really am. I think there might be a little yellow that's, you know, lingering around in the image, but I'm going to use that to my advantage. I kind of like it. Feel free to use it to your taste. I mean, realistically, you could just take the highlights and pull out the yellows and you'll see a difference. But I like them in there for what I'm going for, for this clip, because as we mentioned, you need to color grade, not correct, color grade to suit the emotion of the video. Now, the emotion of this video is going to be very intimate, loving, passionate, emotional. It's a, ro it's a romance short film, so that's kind of what I'm going for here. Um, and yellows can elicit an emotional response from people better. So that's why we're going with this. Now, when it comes to color grading, there are multiple ways to go about this process. I'm gonna show you how to do it manually, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it using a plugin called MFilm. It's located right down here, and you can get that from Motion VFX, and it's beautiful, and I'll show you in a second. But if you don't have that and you don't wanna spend money, no worries. Uh, go ahead and start by pulling up the hue versus saturation curves. Click on color mask, that little icon up here, and then color mask. Now look around your image. What do you want to bring out more? I can already see these greens back here. Could probably pop a little bit more. So if you take that eyedropper and start dragging down, you're going to start highlighting those greens in the back. If you go too far, it's going to spill over into your subject, and you can see where it's highlighted. Now notice. All of the colors that I adjust from here are only gonna affect what I just drew the color mask around. So we'll sample that color and watch. I'll do a dramatic version of this so you can see what I mean. Turn it off, turn it on. It's very subtle, but this is how you can color grade your footage very easily. And just start by doing that with different layers. So let's grab, let's grab this yellow down here and see what we're working with. That looks pretty good. And I think if it was just a little bit more yellow and push to the orange hue, so we need more yellow. And let's push it. There's just a little bit more orange versus, you know, actually yellow. You'll see if I adjust it down here. Then it starts to look a little bit better, right? Bring up those shadows just a little bit and those highlights can come down just a tiny bit. You'll see a difference there. And now you're working with a graded image, right? And you can use that if you want to, but MFilm does a really good job at representing color. So I'm gonna show you how to do that using the MFilm plugin. Now I'm just gonna delete all these edits here and keep my base correction up top here. Drag MFilm look over top of your clip. I'm gonna get rid of my scopes for a second so you guys can see what that looks like. Now MFilm is beautiful it lays out how you should actually be correcting your footage in real time so check this out 
you click on your your white balance and make sure you click click off to the side here so your uh, plugin is highlighted here click on white balance and if you click that it actually shows you what your white balance would be why i don't convert the color space here is because it doesn't allow you to choose bt 2020 conversion essentially which is kind of silly but i don't know maybe they'll get there one day uh, you can adjust exposure here as well as vibrance and saturation the only thing i do is turn this up just a tiny bit and i mean a tiny bit i'm looking at like 0.1 right there right it's just a little sharpness now on screen flares are cool don't overdo them because they're not natural in certain places if we were to take this one i could make it like a little bit yellow and maybe the sun was like shining way up here and you can adjust the scale of that if you wanted to you know like just a little pizzazz and I'll turn it off and then on so you can see what I'm looking for. But I don't think it's necessary for this shot, but it's there. That's the beautiful part about M film. Uh, now you can apply a creative lookup table if you would like to, because that's what we're going for. Now there's a few that I like and I've bought a couple, but I really only use one. Um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. There's a ton of them in here. It's called Pompeii. It's something that I came up with and you know, I don't know if I'll leave it down below, but um, I only use 0.3. And it it just adds blue into my shadows. It makes everything just look really crisp and movie-like. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should provide that for you guys. Let me know if you want if you want that. Let um, only if you know how to master this process, then we'll get there. Um, chromatic aberration. You'll notice around the corners here, it adds some chromatic aberration. I actually like to turn that down quite a bit and then add some feather to it. Distortion, always 0.10. You'll see it's like a little distortion here, but it's actually a cinematic feel. Um, I don't know why I like it, but it's there. Lens blur, same concept. I go way in the outfield with this because I don't want to blend um, any lens blur into my image except just the corners up here. You'll see why in a second. Now you have the option to choose between some film grain and you're thinking like film grain sucks. I don't want any grain in my image, but you actually do want grain in your image and you can get it from shooting at a high ISO, but I prefer to get a very clean image, the cleanest possible and then do it in post-production. Um, although, you know, you may disagree with that. I actually bring the intensity down all the way, the size down quite a bit, take the color noise all the way out, Luma influence just down a little bit. And it's super subtle here, super duper subtle. You guys won't even see a difference unless you did some pixel peeping and zoom like all the way in. Then you can see a difference in the shadows and the greens here if I turned it off and turned it on. But we're zooming back out. Next is vignette. I pop that bad boy back on and I have these things mastered by now because I do it so much. But um, if you turn it on and off, you'll see just around the corners, it kind of focuses all the attention on the subject here without affecting their skin tones, right? And last but not least, add that bad boy on there. And I always go with red. If you want more of like a cinematic feel and like, you know, more of like a wide kind of shot here, then go with that. But I, I you know, I like this. It's very small, so it's not super noticeable, um, but I still think it looks good. And that's ultimately like what I go for there. And that looks good within itself. Uh, I think that's beautiful and I would be happy with that. There's one last thing I wanna add to this clip here to better tell my story because this is supposed to be a story that's set back in the 40s. It kinda of needs like this vintage feel to it. Um, and I'm gonna add a lot here that I like. It's a creative LUT. Uh, let's see here. And vintage shadow is what it is. I'm going to bring that down like 0.2. You'll see it pushes red into my shadows. I'm going to actually bring that down to 0.1, change it to rec 20 because that's what we're working with here. And it is very subtle, but now I'm going to call that a day. However, if you didn't have that, you can do the same exact thing using color curves. If you pulled up your color curves here, went to the red, so at some points, you can always push red into the shadows. You see what I mean? So even if you don't have LUTs, as long as you know how to use the tools, you'll be perfectly fine. Because I shot all of this with the same settings, using the same conversion light, and when I was filming, I knew what this was gonna look like. 
So I can then pull up my adjustment layer up top here, drag that bad boy from here to here and check this out. Command C to copy my settings, Command Shift V to paste my settings onto my adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna turn off all of these and check this out. I just now applied that same grade and correction to all of my footage here, which is gonna get me a huge start and save me a lot of time trying to get everything exactly how I want it. Check this out. Before, after. Before, after. You see what I mean here? That saves you a whole lot of time. And that, my friends, is how you accurately and correctly color correct and color grade your Canon C-Log footage, Rec. 709 and BT 2020. Well, you found this video helpful, huh? If you would like to learn more, please drop a comment down below with a topic you would like me to discuss regarding this camera. Fun fact, I actually pulled this video topic from a comment someone left in a video that I just posted a few weeks ago. So I'm listening to you guys and I've mastered this camera and I wanna share all the knowledge I have with you. So drop some comments down below and I'll create videos based upon those comments. Anyways, that's it for me. My wife is waiting for me over there so I'm off to spend time with my beautiful wife. If you haven't already, unsubscribe, hit that dislike button, leave a crazy stupid comment, that'll make me laugh. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.